Here, we have uh, a no start. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of things we're going to do just to check to make sure what's wrong with it, and then we'll go from there. Obviously, the first thing you're going to do is we did charge, put the battery charger on it because it came in, the battery was stone dead, so we charged the battery up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for spark. What we're going to do is we're going to pull off one of the spark plug wires, and we're going to check and see if we have spark go into the plugs. So uh, let's do that, and we'll see how it goes. This is the, uh, the wire. We're just going to hold it about, uh, about a quarter inch away from the ground and see if we have any spark. So uh, let me just put this down and I'll show you how it goes. It's jumped with a good quarter inch to half inch, so it's a good, nice, bright spark. So we're going to reconnect the wire back onto the, uh, we're going to reconnect the wire back onto the uh, spark plug where we took it off from. Alright, next thing we're going to check is we're going to check to uh, see if we have fuel pressure. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we know we have a good spark, so we're going to actually check to see if we have any fuel pressure. And the way you do that is there's a little valve over here, it's a Schrader valve. You just take this cap off of here. You want to be real careful because you're dealing with fuel now. So what you want to do is you want to take, the, uh, take a rag, stick a rag down underneath the Schrader valve, and you just take a screwdriver and you push the valve in and see if you have any fuel pressure. And we have no fuel pressure at all. So let me just go inside and cycle the key two or three times to see if we could build up any fuel pressure. So we just turn the key on. Let it stay on for a couple seconds because the pump should run for about five seconds. Shut it off. Turn it back on again. Let it run for a couple of seconds. I don't even hear the pump running, so I'm not sure if it even is. And we'll try pressing the Schrader valve in one more time. Okay, we have no fuel pressure in the line whatsoever. So now we, we know there's no fuel pressure. Now we need to check a few more things to see what's going on. We want to uh, check one of the injectors and see if we have injection pulse. So I'll show you how we're going to do that uh, next. Okay, what you want to do is you want to get to an injector and we want to unplug the, uh, the electrical connector off of the injector. This is the injector right down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug the electrical connector off the injector and we're going to use a thing called a Noid light just to see if there's any injection pulse. So what you're going to do is we're going to push that little clip right there in towards the center of the car and just pull the uh, I'm going to put the camera down for one second. Okay, sorry about that, but I couldn't do it with, uh, with just one hand. Now that you have the injector unplugged, which is down inside here, I have the plug off of the injector. We're going to take a piece called a Noid light, and the Noid light is going to be plugged into the injector, and we're going to see if it pulses while we crank the engine, and then we know if we have injection pulse. 
So you just take it and you plug it in. I'm going to put you down one more time. Sorry about that. Okay, so now let me uh, go inside, and I'm going to crank it. And if everything is uh, is working properly with the uh, with the injector pulse, this light should start to blink. So let's see how that uh, see how that goes. And we'll go from there. Okay. All right, as we can see, the injector is actually pulsing the way it's supposed to. So now what we'll do is we're just going to uh, reconnect, we'll disconnect the, uh, the light, we'll plug the, uh, the injector back in over here, and now we know we have an injection pulse, and um, we know we have spark, so we have spark, we have an injection pulse, now we're going to um, just give it a little shot of ether in the, uh, in the front snorkel tube here, and um, it should fire up for a moment, and then when the, when the starting fluid burns out, it'll, uh, it'll die out. So let's just give that a shot, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Give it a little shot of ether. Make sure we reconnect the snorkel tube. You don't want to fire this up with the tube disconnected because you have a uh, an airflow meter that has to sense the flow of air past the meter. So we just reconnect it, and then we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Should start for a moment, and then run out of fuel and die out. Let's see. When we give it a little, a little shot of ether, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on the computer and we're going to take a look down at the uh, wiring harness to the fuel pump and we're going to check to see if we have power down to the pump. So uh, let me get that um, wiring diagram up and we'll check that out. Okay, I just printed off of the computer the uh, schematic for the fuel pump plug in the back. And as we can see, pin number six is supposed to have fuel pump power. So let me unplug the harness and we'll check to see if we have power there. And just so you know, the plug is right underneath the, uh, the back of the fuel tank here. And there's a little pin, you just push that pin in and you can pull it apart. I'm just gonna put this down for a second so I can unplug it. All right, so we unplug it now, and we're going to check pin number six. And pin number six is right in here on the harness. Let me just turn the key to the on position, and we'll go from there. Okay. Key is on, and pin number six should be right here. And as you can see, it does have power to pin number six. So we know that the uh, it has power coming to the pump, but the pump is not running. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, drain the fuel tank, and we're going to pull it out of the car, and uh, the pump itself is most likely the cause. So uh, let me get started, and uh, we'll get right back to it. Okay, now that we got the car up on the lift, we're going to... Uh, we're going to disconnect everything on the tank and uh, and remove it from the car. What we're going to do is we're going to first we're going to disconnect the, uh, the, the oh, obviously the fuel tank is, is drained out. I siphoned that out already. That's empty. We're going to uh, disconnect the filler neck. We're going to take out this bolt right here. 
we got to disconnect these hoses here and here in the back of the car here unplug the electrical connector around on the other side right here we're going to disconnect these hoses right here and then we're going to go in the back underneath here and we're going to disconnect these hose this hose here and then we're going to lift the the jack up underneath the bottom of the tank itself and then we're going to loosen up this bolt here and take the strap down and loosen up this bolt and take that strap down so uh, let me get started on that and i'll show you how it goes all right if you, just want to mention this to you real quickly before you unbolt this you have to you won't be able to pull the filler neck out of the fuel tank itself but once you unbolt this here and you unbolt everything else we're going to lower the tank down just a little bit and then we're going to slide the tank out of the filler neck right here so uh, I'll uh, show you how it goes okay now that we have everything disconnected we disconnected the hoses from the uh, from the filler we unplugged the plug for the electrical connector we took off these hoses up underneath here for the emissions and the way you take these hoses off is this one here, you don't pry it off, you push, you pull the clip towards you, and you'll see where it pulls and opens up. Pull it towards you, and the clip opens up and slides right off, and you pull the line right off. All right, the last thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna go underneath the car to where the, uh, where the fuel filter is located, right up underneath here, and we're gonna remove the, uh, the filter. We're going to take off the safety clip right here, and we have a special tool that we need to put in here to take this off. Let me show you what they look like. This is what it looks like, and what it is, it goes in here like this. Okay, we have a special tool to get in there, and it's, you can either use this type of a, uh, a clip to get in there to take it off, or in this case, I'm going to use this one here because it's a little bit, uh, little bit shallower. And what you do is, once you have your clip off underneath here, you put this over the top like this, you push it in this way here, pull this, this direction here, releases the spring, and you take this and pull it off. I'm going to put the camera down so I can do that. I need two hands. What I always do is after I disconnect that line, I always stick a, uh, a little cap over the top of it so I'm not dripping fuel all over the ground. All right, so now we're just going to take out the bolts underneath here on the fuel tank. This one and this one and the one up in the front. And then we're going to slowly lower the, uh, the gas tank down out of the car. So let's do that and then we'll get right back. Okay, once you have the tank out of the car, uh, you want to unbolt the top of the tank. The float assembly comes right out. Unbolt this. Oh, let me just show you this too. This line was actually on there. And you take that line off the same way that we did the, uh, the previous one with the, uh, the tool. Remember, we put that tool in here like this, put it on like that, and pulled it off. All right, uh, then we unbolt this, and then we're going to replace it with the whole new complete assembly. So uh, let's put that in there. We'll bolt it back up, and then we're gonna put it back in the car. So let's, uh, let's get started. One word of advice, I know uh, everybody is pretty careful with gasoline, but you wanna be extra careful. If you're doing this job indoors in the winter time and you have your heat running, you wanna make sure your heat turns off, because the worst thing that can happen is you have build up all these fumes, your heat turns on, you'll get a spark and you'll get an explosion. So make sure you turn your heat off. I always have my, uh, my compressor door closed so that there's no, uh, no possibility of a spark from the compressor either. Uh, in this particular case, I actually shut the compressor off for that reason. So uh, just be careful because fumes are, uh, they could be a killer. Okay, once you've got the top opened up, you'll look inside and you'll see the, the fuel uh, pump assembly in here. What you basically do is just pull these clips towards you here and the other clip on the other side, over here, and this pump will pull right out of the, uh, right out of the tank. So uh, let me do that, and I'll show you how to put the new one back in in just a moment. Okay, once we got the old assembly out, we put it on the side, and we're gonna take the new assembly, and we're gonna install it right into the gas tank. 
and the way it goes in is exactly how you took it out. This goes in over here, and it fits right down only one way into those lock clips. So let me just put this camera down, and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, if you push it down until these tabs lock back into position where it first came out of. When you push it down, you'll feel it lock right in, and it snaps in. Now we're just going to uh, reattach the, uh, the top lid, and we're going to put the bolts into it, and then I'll come right back and, uh, and show you how it goes uh, once I get those in there. Okay, once we have all the bolts tightened up on the, uh, on the top of the pump, we're going to reconnect our electrical connectors as we disconnected them. This one just pushes, pushes right in here and you'll hear it snap. The wiring we're going to put back underneath where it was located before. It was underneath here. So we're going to put it right back in the same place. I'm going to tape that down. This comes around underneath here to this location here. And then we're going to reattach this hose, and you'll hear it snap. Right, snaps in. And then we put our lock clip back on it to hold it in place. Like that. And, and then we're going to put the tank back into the car. So well, let me get to that point, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, now that we got the tank in, we're just going to go over and make sure everything is tight. The filling neck is in. The uh, hoses are reconnected as they're supposed to be. The clip has been reattached onto the top right up here where it's supposed to be. The fuel line is connected. The clip is on right here as it's supposed to be, the safety clip. Underneath the bottom here, this hose is connected back on. You push it in until you hear it snap. That's for the emission control. And last but not least, these two are connected on over here. These were, uh, oh, sorry. These two hoses here have been reconnected and the clip locked back in place. The bolts are tight here and here and here. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to reconnect this. We're going to put it right back into this spot right here, and uh, then we're going to lower it down and start it up. All right, now that we've got the car on the ground, let's, uh, let's see how everything goes. If everything goes well, we should hear the fuel pump, like, buzzing. That's it. Perfect. Just got to put the fuel back in the tank now and take it for a test drive and we're all done. Not too, uh, not too bad when you know what you're doing. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.